Today I'm going to take you on the flight path the Enola Gay took on August 6, 1945 when they dropped the first atomic bomb on Japan. It all started from an island named Tinian, so I'm going to type in Tinian, Northern Mariana Islands, click here and search. And here's Tinian. Now, what I did, just so you know, is I put in some markers and some headings just to make it easier. If I put those markings and headings in while I was recording, it would be tedious and take too long. So I went ahead and put them in already. Now, they took off from Runway Able. These four runways here are some of the runways that were used during World War II on Tinian Island. Now I'm going to back up. This is Saipan, and if you go to the south, down here you have the island of Guam. But right here, about four miles south of Saipan, you have the I Tinian Island, and it was right here where they flew the atomic missions out of, this airport here. Now, before I show you which runway they took off from, right in here, you have this area here. Now, these two things here, under this hand, underneath this hand here and over here, these were the bomb loading pits. These were the atomic bomb loading pits. And it was in loading pit number one right here on the left where they loaded the little boy atomic bomb onto the Enola Gay August 5th, 1945. Early in the morning of August 6th, 1945, the Enola Gay and its crew taxied out to this runway here and took off, used up the entire length of the runway. And then they made a left turn and started heading north. Two minutes after the Enola Gay took off, another B-29 named the Great Artiste took off, and they were carrying blast measurement instruments. Two minutes after the Great Artiste took off, another B-29 named Necessary Evil took off, and they were carrying the camera equipment to photograph and film the incident. So they headed north, all the way up here, to an island named Iwo Jima, which is right here. And it was above the island of Iwo Jima, right here, where the three planes rendezvoused. The Enola Gay got there first, circled. Two minutes later, the Great Artiste showed up. They circled, and then two minutes after that, Necessary Evil showed up, and the three of them started heading toward the coast of Japan. Most likely, they followed this path here, because what I do know is when they were 30 minutes from dropping the bomb at 8.45 in the morning. It would be 8.45 Tinian time, 7.45 Japanese time. They were traveling at 230 miles an hour, and they were on a compass heading of 353 degrees. And when you do the math on that, that puts them right about in this area, right, right in this general area here. 30 minutes out from dropping the bomb, a heading of 353 degrees would take them up through here. Now, when you're traveling at 230 miles an hour, that means 30 minutes out, you're going to be 115 miles from dropping the bomb. But the 30 minutes did not include their three-minute bomb run. So they actually were 27 minutes out from making the left turn to do their three-minute bomb run before they dropped the bomb. And the calculations I came up with brought it to right about here. 103 and a half miles before they made their left turn right in here this general area I may not be exact or perfectly precise but this is the general area right here where the Enola Gay made its left turn and started its three minute bomb run now when you're traveling at 230 miles an hour in three minutes you're going to go about 11 and a half miles so from this point here out through here straight line, a compass heading of 264 degrees. That's what we know. So from the left turn, they were on a compass heading of 264 degrees, came to here, and if, and the physics that I did told me that they dropped it from about right here. I had my physics double-checked by a physics professor. He told me that I forgot to calculate in air resistance. He calculated the air resistance in for me. What I had was 2.747 miles, the release point from the target, and what he ended up with wind resistance, what he ended up getting with wind resistance was 2.67 miles, which puts it 
right here, this line in the center. So it was about a roughly a tenth of a mile difference from wind resistance. So it was in this general area right about in here where the Enola Gay released the atomic bomb and then they did a hard right turn and headed out at 155 degrees out in this direction. Now the bomb took 43 seconds from the time it released to the time it detonated. And in that 43 seconds, it traveled about 2.67 miles, 2.7 miles from here to the target. Now the aiming point was this T-shaped bridge right here. Thomas Faraby, the bombardier, was aiming right for the middle of this bridge. But he missed it because the bomb actually detonated above this building here. It's known as the atomic building or the atomic bomb building right here. And the distance from this building here to the center of the AOE bridge, I believe you pronounce it, A-I-O-I, AOE bridge, is about 430, 440 feet from the center of the bridge to this building. So they didn't hit the target direct, but 430, 440 feet in terms of an atomic bomb is pretty much a direct hit. So they dropped the bomb aiming for this bridge here, and it ended up detonating over the atomic the building here that became known as the Atomic Dome building. Now, I'm going to pull back here. After dropping the bomb, the Enola Gay made that hard right turn, and they were going 155 degrees from their 264 degrees. So they made this 155 degree turn straightened out, and they were still moving pretty fast, and they ended up being about in this general area right here, right in here. So they were right about in this general area when it happened. The shock wave from the initial blast struck them when they were at 11 and a half miles, and it hit them with a force of about 3 Gs. They were hit by a less severe second shock wave in this area, or a little past the area, but that was the, the, the deflection of the initial shock wave bouncing off of the ground. So once they, so once they uh, were done with the shock waves, they started circling, and they made three full circles just to observe what had happened. And what they said is they, one of them said all you, couldn't, all you could see was a bunch of dust and fire. You couldn't really see anything below the blast. Another one said it looked like boiling oil. One of them said it even had kind of a purplish color to it. But what seemed to amaze them most of all was the, the size of the mushroom cloud and the speed at which it rose up above the ground. It didn't take long for the mushroom cloud to be higher than they were. Now, what I forgot to tell you is the bomb was released in this area from an altitude of 31,060 feet. And that's five and a half miles straight up, and it took 43 seconds for the bomb to travel the five and a half miles down before it blew up. The bomb weighed about 9,700 pounds, just under 10,000 pounds, so that kind of weight being pulled toward the earth is going to accelerate really quick. And if I did my math correctly, its top speed was about 943 miles when it detonated, which means it was going faster than the speed of sound. But there were there nobody heard the sonic boom simply because the bomb was ahead of the sonic boom and the atomic bomb blast got to them before any sonic boom got to them. So anyway, after they observed what had happened, the crew of the Enola Gay, after circling here about three full circles, ended up heading back to Tinian, landed back on Tinian Island. It was a very successful mission in terms of no problems and everything working out the way they wanted it to. But it was a bad day for the Japanese people in Japan. They said anywhere from 70 to 80,000 people were killed that were directly underneath the blast. And out of that 80, 70 to 80,000 people, about 20,000 of them were 20,000 of them were military personnel. So there you have it. The route and location the Enola Gay took on August 6, 1945, from Google Earth.